Hi guys, it's Ruby and I'm back again with another Vegas planning video. Today I want to talk to you guys about the worst advice I have ever seen for Las Vegas. If that is something you guys are interested in, go ahead and keep on watching. If you are new here, welcome. My name's Ruby and I am a Las Vegas tourist. I travel quite a few times a year and I want to give you guys my best tips and tricks for how to plan a fantastic trip. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, you can go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you would like to follow me over on Instagram, I post photos almost every day, all of my pictures from the trip, and I also like to go live on Instagram, so if you are interested, you can follow me there. Okay, let's get into what I think is the worst advice I have ever heard for Las Vegas. Now, I wanna put a disclaimer because I don't want anyone to get upset with me. I did the overrated video, and people had some pretty visceral reactions to that. That's my opinion! Like, Please note, this is just the way that I think you should do things when you travel to Las Vegas. I'd like to point out too that I, one of my favorite phrases is that everyone vacations differently. Some people are there to gamble and party and sit at the pool. That's me, that's what I like. I like to drink when I'm on my vacation. Some people aren't drinkers. Some people wanna work out when they're on vacation. Some people like to go out into nature. Cause we want everyone to know how neat nature is. Everybody does things differently, so these tips aren't gonna apply to everyone. My first idea for the worst advice I've ever seen was someone mentioned, oh, I don't waste money on cocktails in Vegas. They're such a rip off. I just drink in my room. Now. Here's why this is bad advice. You have the option to take your alcohol that you bought anywhere with you. Some people still don't know this, so I wanna go over this, that Nevada is an open carry state. You are allowed to take anything that is not glass out with you onto the street and carry it around while you're sightseeing. You can bring it yourself. I've also mentioned in previous videos, if you've seen my other tips, that you can pack your own alcohol. You can bring up to five different bottles of booze with you in your carry-on. You can mix your drink in the room, put it in a large, big plastic cup, and take it out with you. Totally fine to do. There's really no reason to sit in your room and drink unless you're just enjoying your large room, unless you're partying in your suite, or you're just relaxing. That's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. I just mean that you do not have to sit in your room if you're drinking your own alcohol. You can bring it with you. So I wanted to clarify that. All right, here we go again with more alcohol tips. <laughs> If you watch my vlogs, you guys know. You guys make a lot of jokes about my liver. I've been drinking beer since I was 10. I'm kidding, that's not true. <laughs> I have not been drinking that long. Someone suggested in a YouTube video about how to get these free drinks on the casino floor. And I saw them suggest to put some chips on red and some chips on black on the, cas on the roulette table so that your bet balances out and you get all your money back and you can get a free drink. Bro, what are you talking about, man? The problem there is that if it lands on zero or double zero, you're losing both of your bets. So now you've just lost even more money. And also, I feel like the attendant at the roulette table is gonna look at you like you cuckoo crazy. <laughs> like, I would be embarrassed to do it, just personally. And it's super unnecessary, you guys. You don't have to like put fake bets to get drinks. Here's the thing, I was in Mandalay Bay, a friend of mine was gambling on a slot machine and me and two of my other friends were just standing next to her talking. The uh, cocktail waitress came up and asked us if we wanted drinks and we ordered drinks and tipped her a buck each. And she brought us drinks. We weren't even gambling. <laughs> like we, we didn't have any money in a slot other than my one friend playing. And they still gave us free drinks. You don't have to like pretend to gamble or like try to scam the casino. I know that they are cracking down on giving away tons and tons of free drinks because a lot of people are just kind of abusing this function. But if you're sitting at a slot and you put 10 bucks in and you just chill there for a while, someone will come around and you can order a drink. You do not have to like con the table games or do anything crazy like that. That was just real weird to me. I've never had a problem getting a drink on the casino floor. They take a minute sometimes. It does take a bit for them to come back around at times, depending on how busy it is, but they will come around. You don't have to do anything weird to get a free drink. Okay, here is one that I think this really depends on the type of person you are. So I'm not saying that this is a bad idea for everyone, but I think for a lot of people, this is a bad tip. So many people hate the resort fees so much that they say you just don't stay on the strip, stay off the strip. So you don't have to pay the resort fees. Here's why I don't think you should do that. If you watch my resort fee video, I go into real depth about resort fees. So it's kind of interesting if you're just curious. But in my opinion, if you're not staying on the strip and it's your first time in Vegas, you're missing out on some of the experience. 
Vegas is designed to be super, super friendly for tourists, whether it's your first time or your 50th time. If you are staying off strip, chances are you're going to have to have a plan to drive to the strip and go from there and it's gonna waste time. The only thing to me that matters when I'm on vacation is time. I am willing to spend extra money to avoid uh, wasting time and do anything I can to not waste time because it's all I've got while I'm there. Now, obviously, if you're planning to do things off strip, if you're not planning to be on the strip that often, maybe you're going out into the desert, you're going to the Grand Canyon, you're doing more of a like nature trip, totally fine. Maybe you're a huge party of like 30 people and you're gonna get an Airbnb and you have like a designated party bus and you guys are doing these certain things each night. Totally makes sense. You are an exception to this rule. For most people, if you're a couple and you're like, we've never gone and we wanna go to Vegas, just find one of the hotels on this trip to stay on because there's so much to do and so much to see and you'll really get more of the feel. Now, you could also stay on Fremont Street. I love Fremont, I do. I have a video on what you can do on Fremont. I am gonna be staying downtown on my next upcoming vacation, so you guys should make sure to subscribe so you can see me staying downtown. It's my first time and I'm pretty excited. Okay, my last tip, I get commented this comment maybe every day at least twice in my videos. Somebody says it to me and it is the worst advice for me ever. And they just look at me and they say, Ruby, why won't you rent a car? No. Go watch my food and drink vlog where I show how many cocktails I have when I'm in Vegas. <laughs> I swear I don't drink that much in, in my daily life, but in Vegas I do. And there is no way I'm getting behind the wheel of a car. You guys, no way. If you are a drinker, absolutely no. But the other thing is, I think even if you're not a drinker, if you are a gambler and you're planning to go from casino to casino, parking's not free anymore in Vegas. They're charging for parking. If I were to add up parking fees and how much it costs to rent the car, I guarantee you the amount of Ubers that I take to and from around the strip would come nowhere near. It sounds good on paper, and again, I think if you're somebody who's renting an Airbnb off somewhere, then yeah, you probably will need to do that, and that might be the better option, but if you're staying on strip, there's pretty much zero reason to rent a car, except maybe if you have mobility issues, or there's this another reason that you have to drive. In that case, obviously you're exempt for the average party traveler, average group. Guys, by the time you split up an Uber four ways and you've maybe called like four Ubers the entire trip, it's really not gonna be that expensive. So I don't think renting a car is worth it. Okay, you guys, that was the video. I, I'm already sweating because I know my overrated video got some crazy comments. I can't wait to see what you guys think. It's totally okay if you disagree with me. I just wanna help people out. So if you have a reason why you think that some of this advice is bad or good, feel free to let me know in the comments. I have a whole playlist on travel tips and tricks for you guys if you wanna see those. And thank you again so much for watching. If you're not a subscriber, I'm gonna be traveling soon. I'm gonna be doing all kinds of new Vegas content, so I hope to see you there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next one.